Hello, hola, and never say from around the world to your classroom. This is Reggie Alexander. In this video, we're going to cover the basic concept of the different methods of separating mixed cost into fixed and variable component. Mixed costs are costs that include both fixed and variable cost to be effective in determining the price point of a particular product. The business manager has to separate the mixed costs into fixed and variable. Further, segregating the mixed costs into fixed and variable is required so that the business manager can easily prepare business budgets and can form realistic plans for the future. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Business organizations can use a couple of methods for separating a mixed costs into fixed costs and variable costs. These methods are HILO method and scatter graph method. HILO method is used to split the fixed and variable components of a mixed cost of a product. It takes into consideration the total dollars of a mixed cost at the highest point of activity and the total dollars of mixed costs at the lowest point of activity. The presumption is that the fixed cost will remain the same at both points of the activity, which is the high point and the low point, and therefore the net change of the mixed cost must be variable cost. Let me illustrate with an example. Let's assume that during the year, we produce product A and we track every month's production activity. The highest level of activity for product A was the month of April. We produced 1,000 units at a total mixed cost of $5,000. The lowest level of activity was in the month of November, with the total units produced of 200 at a total mixed cost of $2,500. The formula to calculate the variable cost per unit will be the highest cost minus the lowest cost divided by the highest activity minus the lowest activity. Thus, the variable cost per unit equals $5,000 minus 2,500 divided by 1,000 units minus 200. So that will give us a total of $2,500 divided by 800, which will give us $3.12. Therefore, the variable cost per unit is $3.12. Now, if we take the variable cost per unit and multiply it with the total number of units produced every month, we will have the total variable cost for that month. The rest of the mixed cost will be fixed costs. Let's plug in the figures for the month of April. We produce 1,000 units. The variable cost for the month of April will be 1,000 units times the variable cost per unit, which is $3.12. Therefore, 5,000, which is a mixed cost, minus 3,125, which is a variable cost, will give you a fixed cost of $1,875. Let's plug in the figures for the month of November. We produce 200 units. The variable cost for the month of November will be 200 units times the variable cost per unit, which is three dollars and twelve cents, which is equal to six hundred twenty-five dollars. Therefore, two thousand five hundred dollars minus six twenty-five, which is the variable cost, will give you a fixed cost of one thousand eight seventy-five. The next method is the scatter graph method. This method is easy for a reader to analyze because. It is a visual representation of the numbers on a graph. The graph uses the x-axis to represent what the company produces and the y-axis to track the cost. After we mark the points on the graph, a line is drawn through the points that best fits the relationship between the variables. Like the Heino method of mixed cost analysis, Scanner graph method follows a formula, which is y equals a plus bx where Y is the total cost, A is the total fixed cost, B equals available cost units, and X active below. The process to analyze mixed cost in a scatter graph is done by using three-step process. They are, number one, each active D level is plotted on the X axis and the costs are marked on the Y axis. A line is carefully drawn to match the closest data points to find out the relationship between the two variables. 
The presence of fixed cost for mixed cost usually starts from the upper point on the way axis, which would indicate the presence of fixed cost. The upward slope of the line shows a gradual increase in the cost with the increasing activity level. Finally, after determining the fixed cost in step two, the slope of the line, then the variable cost per unit, is calculated by using two points, x1 and y1, and x2 and y2 on the line. The formula you find per unit variable cost can be written as follows. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Let's look at an example. Let's say I have a company making laptops. Here is the overhead data for six production months. What is the cost function from this data? Let's use a scatter graph method of mixed cost analysis to discover it. Here is a scatter plot graph of my laptop production. The number of units is on the x-axis. The related costs are on the y-axis. I have drawn a line that shows an increase in cost as production increases. The line crosses the y-axis at approximately $10,000. This is where there is zero activity, which represents the total fixed cost of $10,000. The slope of the line, which in this case will show us the variable cost per unit produced, can be found using the equation for calculating slope we looked at a few moments ago. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We plug in the numbers for our y values on the graph. Let's take the highest and lowest y values, 28,000 minus 15,800. Then the x, we will take the highest and the lowest x values, which is 1,450 minus 550. This gives us a slope of the line 13.55, which is approximately $13.55 as a variable cost per unit. One common misconception is that the scatter graph method is an easy visual representation, but this method is too labor intensive. If there are a lot of activities and different types of products, it is very confused. Another drawback is, if there is a sudden increase in fixed cost due to an increased demand, then the estimates of the graph will be misleading. For example, the purchase of a new equipment to meet the increased demand and production. The estimates will be incorrect in relation to the actuals. These are the different methods used to separate mixed cost into fixed and variable. Please feel free to explore and calculate where different methods about to separate fixed and variable costs on your own or check out more about this topic on check. That's it for now. Until next time. Goodbye, adios, and ciao.